So Radha Rasuda Nidhi, verse 125. May. Oh, my God. Jai Ho. Wow. Jai Ho. Our Zoom, our Zoom is complete when you are there. Jai Ho. <laughs> may Sri Radha, who gives life to Madhu Patti, the Krishna be who is very distressed when there is some obstacle to the fulfillment of his desires, <clears throat> whose incomparable moon-like face, which is the source of delicious transcendental bliss, makes the full moon seem insignificant because its nectarian rays do not even give an atomic drop of the ambrosial effulgence of her moon-like face. Mm. And whose red lips carry an ocean of fresh nectar, that is the essence of sweetness. May Sri Radha be pleased with us. Should I read it again? It's so yes, complex. Yes. It's a very long, uh, mm. nice verse. I read it again. May Sri Radha, who gives life to Madhu Patti, the Krishna bee, who is very distressed when there is some obstacle to the fulfillment of his desires, of Krishna's desires, whose incomparable moon-like face, which is the source of delicious <coughs> transcendental bliss, makes the full moon seem insignificant, because its nectarian rays do not even give an atomic drop of the ambrosial effulgence of her moon-like face. Wow and whose red lips carry an ocean of fresh nectar that is the essence of sweetness. May Sri Radha be pleased with us. Sri Radha, the life giver of Madhupati. <coughs> Who is us? Us? Who are sitting here? Us. You, this is a question? That was a, no, no joke. No joke. <laughs> Real question. So Udavji is asking to the assembled Rasika devotees, may Sri Radha be pleased with us. This is like the embrace of the whole verse. Prabhupada is speaking. Who is us? Mm -hmm. When he says us, does he mean? Who does he mean? Yeah, you repeat this then. When Prabhupada says us, who is he referring to? Mm. All jivas? The team in Mungur Mandir? Mm. His close associates? The close associates of uh, Lord Chaitanya? I think there are different levels on that point. First of all, the level of humility. This is a, a sign of humility. He is not speaking in the I, me, and mine uh, uh, prono pronoun. So he says us like he is not, not, he's not naming himself. This is one level. Definitely of humility he's saying us instead of me and then, then this again this leads to that what you said of course for everyone who is aspiring for manjari bhav so both are, go hand in hand so his his very deep humility he's saying us because he doesn't want to say you, you know bhakti vinod thakur many times he never says me and i so the big acharyas they are so humble they never say me and i and mine our us you know and that means you know th that when he says that that means for us if we are also humble and if we also have this humility we belong to that group also so he's also speaking to us this is how 
how I understand it. It's both. Yeah, I feel the same spontaneously. I feel those who are reading these beautiful prayers, he is praying for all of us. He made it available for us. So everyone who reads this is us. That's how I feel. It's us, all of us. He's praying for us. Mm. Yes. Commentary. Sripad's heart is immersed in relishing transcendental visions. In the previous verse, he relished the sweet mellow of Sri Radha, enjoying reversed pastimes. And when the vision vanishes, he considers the world to be void without the sweet relish of Swamini's form and attributes. The bliss of the relish of the transcendental Supreme Lord is so great that if the aspirant experiences it once, he always remains immersed in such relish and he loses taste for any other subject than Krishna. I like still your question. Mm -hmm. I, I like uh, Udav's question because uh, it really is a deep meaning of us. Who is us? It's, a, it's really a good question. And uh, I felt that Uh, Tarun Baba is, is right, 100% what he said, that uh, Acharyas never say, I, this is... But I also feel that those who are thinking on this verse, I think they are us. These are those souls who like to be the servants of Swamini, especially. Because... Uh, Maybe you can con again read this. May Swamini be the whole verse. No. Also, oh, yeah. Part. May Sri Radha, and then glorification of her, and then be pleased with us. Be pleased with us. Mm -hmm. uh, who? Which souls ask for this? The kinkaris. Hmm? These are mainly the the kinkaris, no? Mm -hmm. I also can feel this, that uh, her servants, her intimate servants, desire that she is pleased with us, with our service. So this is a direct uh, meaning in this, yeah. what I can feel. Yes. Very nice, but there's another, <coughs> sorry, just in the first line of Anantadas Bhavaji, it's talking about the, the entire world that's been abandoned Mm. Those who have not had this experience are in a of Swamini's sweet relish. Are in a world void of sweet relish. So all the poor souls who have not understood or had this experience or had the um, had the uh, the contact with this with Radha. Mm. Everybody in the world is maybe the we. It sounds like Ananda Das is going in that direction. I, I really um, uh, agree with uh, both of you are saying it's really according to our bhav, no? As a kinkari, I kind of know that she has accepted me because Guru Manjuri has accepted me. But out of humility, I still pray for her blessings, you know, that I can go more in the seva for her. And at the same mm -hmm. time, out of humility, as Kataram Baba said, Prabhupada Sarasvati is praying for every jiva. That what Udav just uh, said, that every jiva should 
get that blessing of Swamini in their life. So it's uh, everything is there, no, in this us. <laughs> But to be pleased, to be pleased means some kind of happy with that mm -hmm. what we are doing, yeah. how we behave, how we increase the mood to come in this loving uh, 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 relationship and uh, even in the loving feelings. Mm -hmm. So this, then she is pleased. Mm -hmm. She will not be pleased with every uh, uh, behave of every mm -hmm. uh, soul. That I don't believe this. Mm -hmm. But uh, in general, I think she is pleased when we are um, eager to, um, to serve her even in the form of loving relationships to each other, even if we don't know her name. That's, I could uh, see that then, then she is pleased. Uh, this is not a question like Gurudev explained also of uh, some religious or whatever. She always, he always speak <clears throat> about her kingdom. And this is even in the animal, uh, There is a uh, uh, love, you can find this. And uh, then uh, if there is love and relationship, then she is pleased. And when the, this love and relationship becomes more concrete and we walk our path uh, of this kind of a bhakti, uh, then she is more pleased. And as closer we are coming, as more pleased she is, right? Mm. So then she is pleased if we come close to the law. Also the first sentence Udhavaji just, just, uh, just mentioned from Baba refers to the coming and the appearance of Mahaprabhu. All the souls who have not have contact with Radhika, that is actually the mission of Mahaprabhu to bring, to bring these souls in contact with, with Swamini. So this also points to the appearance of Mahaprabhu. Mm. Very nice point, yeah. Mm. That's all inclusive then. I, I feel also that it is some kind of blessings also for us, for all readers, so all generation. <clears throat> I feel, um, if I listen to this, I, um, I feel encouraged from him. Oh, my Raghunath, oh, I, I also, he bring me in the same... <laughs> <laughs> in the same boat. In the same boat. So um, Raghunadas is idol, no, of 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 us. So mm. my Raghunath, oh, uh, mm. me also. <laughs> wow. I feel like this, yeah. and, and for sure it's some blessings. <laughs> also, blessings. Krishna Das Kaviraj openly yeah. said like this. Wow. Offer, he offered the blessings to all readers, uh, present and the futures. Wow. Very, mm. Thank you. Hmm. You have to see. You have to see the 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 whole point. The whole po why why did the acharyas? You know, this is a very good point. Why did the acharyas write down anything? That is the whole. That is the whole point. You know, the Raghunath Goswami, Rupa Goswami, Vishwanath Chakravarti part, and here Prabodhananda Saraswati Thakur. Do you think they they have the need to write anything down? They have realized everything. They have realized that's what the only reason why they write anything down is to give the mercy to the fallen souls. That, that is the only reason they write these things down. And we are in such a fortunate position by Advaita and by many, many beautiful devotees who translated those grandas and, and, and books. So this is the only reason. Every I heard many times saying every word of the Mahachan is actually Mahaprasadam from their lotus mouth. So everything they write down is meant as a blessing for those who, who eat the words, you can say, who, who read those words. So the, whole, the only purpose of their writing is not to entertain themselves or to make some, you know, career or something. It is only meant straightforward, only meant to, as a blessings for the fallen souls. Every word. <clears throat> Very nice. Thank you. Hmm. An entirely democratic. I mean, we said so many times on the uh, Chaitanya Mahaprabhu appearance day a week ago that how democratic it was essentially that there was no 
hierarchy of availability of access to the to the message that it uh, Mahaprabhu's message is to everyone and there are no uh, qualifications necessary everyone is welcome to mm. to uh, take part and that is the beginning when Baba is writing the introduction I think either the introduction of Vilapakusa Manjali or I think very much the introduction to Vilapakusa Manjali one of the his sentence begin with every individual soul is qualified for Manjari Bhav. So this is still a widespread misunderstanding that Manjari Bhav is only, you know, an elitist snobby club where only the cool ones can join. This is not true. Actually, this is absolutely not true. Baba, many, many times he said, every individual soul is qualified to enter into Manjari Bhav. You know, it's just, but there's only one. There's only one qualification. We have to make a nice container without holes to catch the mercy of those who are in that. The only cause, the only cause for this Raganuga Bhakti and Manjari Bath Bath is the Kripa of the devotees of Radhika and, and of course their devotees. That is the only qualification. Every individual soul. So he is referring factually to every individual soul who feels the inclination, who feels that this bath is my bath. He is welcome. There is no no qualification, you have to be fast, you have to be intelligent, you have to be big, you have to be small. There is no qualification. So this we always should know. This gives great hope. This is not a competition, you know. We don't have to, we don't like in studies, you know, you have to make your exam in and you have to be powerful with a good grade and all these things here. The only gradation we have, the only qualification we need is humility and, uh, and the begging for the for the mercy of Guru and the Vaishnava. So this is what Prabhupada Nanda Saraswati is telling us here. Be pleased with us means that we should follow in his footsteps. Mahaprabhu is Tarunno, the greatest gift in our times because as you said in Prema Bhakti Chandrika, Baba is also writing, as you said, everyone can become a Radha Dasi in this age. Like the good, the bad, the ugly, the drunkard, the old, even my mother can become a Radha Dasi. There's no limitation to it, you know. <laughs> we we limit ourselves, but Mahaprabhu, there is no limitation. And if you see when people first time come to Guru, they get in contact with a with a Premi Rasika, the bhav is infused, and they don't even know what is going on. They don't even know why they're starting to take the japa. They don't even know why they are loving the songs. They don't know why they're feeling this. Because this is the free gift of Mahaprabhu, right, Tarun Baba? It's, there is nothing needed. It's just to connect with the bhav of the And the presence, you know, and the presence of you. And of course, the most important thing is uh, a Rasik, a Rasik Mahachan must be there. He should be there. You know, always there. It's so important that there is someone there who can lead and who can give out that mercy. And we are very fortunate that Sadhu Maharaj is still on our planet. Yes. That that we can have this personal association and feel that infusion. Otherwise, we have to be we have to turn inside. I have to turn inside to connect with my beloved Baba. So that is that is also very powerful. But you know, when you have someone sitting in the midst of you all in Vrindavan, that is that is the perfect blessing because those souls are the perfect. How can you say the perfect uh, 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 transparent mediums? To, to spread that wonderful mercy, you know. Otherwise, we can talk for five hours. There will be nothing if there is no yes, mercy yes. of a Mahachan there. You know, like Jayananda is here, like all these great souls are here. And Sadhu Maharaj is, is watching and is, 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 is our umbrella, you know. He's keeping the umbrella above our heads. So this is what Rupa Goswami is saying. This is the essence of that verse. The cause of Raganuka Bhakti is the creeper of Krishna and his devotees. They, we feel this every day. If we don't feel this, sometimes I don't feel it, and that is my that is my fault. But then the shower is always turned on. We just have to yeah. get under it. <laughs> we have to get under the waterfall. Not actually the, the yeah. Kripa is always flowing in Gurudev, and he's like sometimes the waterfall. Sometimes we don't want. Sometimes no, we are not. We don't want to get wet. Yeah. Sometimes the mind is a freaking idiot. So sometimes we have to push him. 
and we have to we have to always every day remember this <coughs> and and how many time we can spend under the shower of the mercy is to our benefit sometimes it's more sometimes it's less and at one point we should not leave that shower that is that is the aspiration that's not so easy it's more easy in the holy dharma i tell you but here in the western world yeah you have to always it's always a challenge Yes, Baba. And uh, what I like to add to this point, that Gurudev is always with us. Um, now he is m more uh, in a uh, uh, not active role like it was before. And I think also in the future that what he is giving, he will always give like... I ask him sometimes, how is your connection to your Gurudev? And he said, "I'm we always connected. So this is a, a presence that is never stopped. And for us, it, uh, it means that uh, we would accept this uh, relationship like he has to his Guru also between us and him. And uh, if he is active or not active, he will be, like he said, always be with us. And he is always, he is now here, but he is not so active as it was before. But uh, I think it is, for us, it's, it's needed that we always remember his presence here in the group and uh, to, to recognize his big blessing on all of us that I want to add to this point. <clears throat> And maybe you can start with this first. This is also very interesting. The first in the, in the verse there. Commentary? No, no, in the, in the verse. She? Yeah. Nei Shri Nei Shri, yeah. Again? Yes, please. Mm. Sorry. Nei Shri Radha. Who gives life to Madhupati? What is this meaning? Mm. <laughs> <laughs> yes, this is the question. Uh, 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 the, 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 this is uh, also again a, a deep meaning. A uh, meaning in this, uh, may Sri Rata, who gives life to Madhupati, Madhupati <laughs> means that he is not alive. That is the meaning. He is not this Madhupati without her. And uh, this we can discuss this point, why she gives life to Krishna. This is a very interesting point for me. We can go deep in this. Um, this is also what Gurudev always pointed, that she is Uh, his life, Krishna's life. Without her, what is Krishna? So she gives the life. This is one important point here. Yeah. <coughs> he has the life, he has the creation, he has the pleasure, the bliss, the love, but she makes it uh, experienced. She gives to him the experience of what he is, all these, the opulence, the, the love, the pleasure, the bliss, these he has, but they're not alive. They're not lived. They're not experienced. And this is what she, through her Shakti, or Ladini Shakti, primarily, gives to. <coughs> Someone like to add to this point something. What is meaning of this? She gives life to Krishna. I think also it will come because it is referring to the Leela that is appearing here. Radhika Prema Guru, Amishi <laughs> Shanat. She makes me dance in various ways. I'm out of control. So when we dance, we feel alive, right? If you go to a dance party, 
and you start dancing, you feel every pore, you know, you feel so happy and alive. So love makes him alive and makes him dance in various ways. This is like giving life to Madhupati, that she could have always said, no, she snips and he spins him around, no? This is our Swamini. <laughs> Yes. Yes. Krishna is a bad dancer. <laughs> no, he is quite yeah. good. Yeah. But he's out of control. She makes him like all the <laughs> It's come to me when often it says that this body actually, uh, without soul, is is dead. Even now, mm. is dead, but only because there is a soul. Mm. It's moving yeah. somehow. Wow. Sure. So, in the same time, everybody uh, looking for the God, call Him for something, you know, but He's just boring there, no, nothing. And suddenly, suddenly, if there is Radha, He also feel life in life. Mm. So, it's remind me yes, of this. Yes. Also, also, the word Madhupati is very interesting. Why is Prabhupada Saraswati Thakur saying Madhupati? Very interesting word, because the sweetness of both increase when they are in their association. So the word Madhupati has no meaning without Radhika. There is no meaning. Then there is Vishnu or whatever, Dwaraka or Aishwarya. Uh, so the word Madhusudan and the word Madhupati have different meanings. The more you go into the bath, Madhu means honey. Madhu means the nectar of the lips of Swamini. Madhu can mean many, many deep, even more deep things we cannot discuss in public uh, uh, forums. But honestly speaking, he only says here Madhu Pati because he makes the point that Radhika, without Radhika, there is no sweetness. And without, when they meet, the sweetness of both increase and increase and increase. It's like ping pong, more sweet, more sweet, more sweet, more sweet. So both are getting sweeter and sweeter. So if Krishna is not with Radhika, he is not Madhu Pati. So this is also every word the Acharyas choose and every word my Baba chooses and Gurudev chooses and Narayan Maharaj chooses. All this mean has a pregnant with, with Marivet meaning, you know. So this Madhupati, he could have said, you know, he could have said Mohan, he could have said many, yeah. many names for Krishna. But he is saying here uh, Madhupati because without the sweetness of Swamini, Krishna has no sweetness. And that is the Rasik point of view, of course, in Tattva. We know on the on the level of tattva, we know that Krishna is the Rasa Raj, he is full of Rasa, he is full of sweetness, but still on the platform of Rasa, we know that he can only be complete in the association, in the proximity, in the close proximity of Swamini. So that means Madhu Pati, Madhu Sudan. You know, this is the word of the the, the, the meaning of Madhu only comes into play by the mercy of Swamini. What is the meaning of Madhu Pati? Sweet honey. Pati? Pati. The Krishna bee, the sweet Krishna bee. Pati also means husband. Husband, mm. husband also. Mm -hmm. Yes, thank you. We are just saving because we have an electronic oh, yes. yeah. power cut. Power cut. 24 hours. <laughs> but we're fully charged. Somehow. somehow, yeah, we are. We are lucky that we can be with all of you. Mm. Should I continue? Yes. <coughs> After crossing the stage of anatta nivritti, the cessation of bad habits, the stage of asakti, transcendental attachment to the Lord appears, and the Lord's pleasure potency starts her work of providing the transcendental relish. As a result of sincere devotion, nishchayatmika buddhi, or firm determination, appears. And as a result of bhajan, the aspirant becomes free from bad habits 
and gradually advances to the stages of ruchi, relish, and asakti, attachment. This firm determination has been beautifully described by Srila Vishwanath Chakravati Pad in his commentary on Bhagavad Gita. The devotional practice of glorifying the Lord, remembering Him and serving His lotus feet as it has been instructed to me by my spiritual master, is my goal and my life. It is impossible for me to give this up under any circumstance. This is what I desire, and this is my duty. I have no other duty than this, and I don't desire anything else, even in dreams. It may make me happy. It may make me unhappy. It may liberate me from material existence, or it may not. That makes no difference to me at all. Such firm Determination is possible in unadulterated devotion. Quite strange thing to say. What? It's quite strange. Right. And strong. Nice. And on the one hand, you could say, I think it's quite strong. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Okay. On the one hand, you could say, well, this is a description of the principle of not atta non-attachment to fruit fruitive outcomes. You know, no matter what comes out, I do it anyway. It's not a it's not a condition that there be favorable outcome. So that's nice. That's one way to say. But when he says, I couldn't do anything else. The, the very first line of the quote. I couldn't do anything else. Impossible. Impossible, yeah, thank you. That, that um, once I've been exposed to this flavor, then I'm rewired. And my, my, my being, my soul, is never looks at the world at the, in the same way again. Just like all the devotees around here, once you taste, like Gopinapa is saying, that once you taste, then suddenly you're, you're stuck, you're lost. So there's a kind of point of no return experience that we have in devotional service, which is unexplainable to me, but that you see everywhere. That you see, yeah? It's unexplainable I, to you? Yeah. If you want to know about yourself, you also would know how yeah, it yeah, happened yeah, to yeah. you, yes? Just like Gopinath said, you know, nobody understands this. It's not even our choice. But it's impossible to think something else <laughs> from a certain stage. And that's really surrender. That's really a kind of surrender. It's like even you want to stop, you cannot stop, you know? It's because it's saying the following the instructions of my Guru Dev. No, what was it saying? Yes. The devotional practice of glorifying the Lord, remembering Him, and serving His lotus feet as has. It been instructed to be my by my spiritual master as my goal and life. It is impossible for me to give this up under any circumstance. Glorifying, remembering him, how in the mood and with the instructions of my Guru Dev. If I take the mood and the instructions of my Guru Dev, then it's impossible for me to go out anymore. If I do it independently, <clears throat> with my <throat> own mood, my own instructions, yeah, then I, I go many ways. But if we follow it in that mood, no suniti, mm. that is not possible anymore. It's like we become the shadow, right? And even if we want to break out of the shadow, it's not possible. If we have that understanding that it's 
have to follow in, in, in Guru Dev's mood. In his mood, we have to glorify, remember, serve our Ishta Dev, not in according to our own moods. What do you think? Jai Shri Radhe. Jai Govardhani. Yes, please enlighten us. Thank you very much for this wonderful point, actually. Because actually, that means he was giving me this love, the love of Radha. Mood means bhav, mahabhav means brema, love. He gave me the brema, the love. And now I'm crazy. I cannot stop because of his love. He injected me. He made me addicted. He's the culprit. <laughs> He was the first crazy candle who flamed up all the other candles. The reason why it's so strong uh, is because, of course, when we discover this emotion, we're rediscovering ourselves. The moment of discovering prema is happens at the moment of realizing the constitute, constitutional position, as Prabhupada says, the Swarup. So we're becoming this moment of becoming addicted. The moment of addiction is our self-discovery. <clears throat> because before we didn't know who we are. And from this view of uh, point of view, we cannot fix this, yeah. and this is what oh, Guru. Yeah. And this is what this uh, Guru Dev's blessing is giving to us. And then we cannot continue with some speculations. Without the guidance of a guru, we it's easy to become a, a speculator. It could be like this or it could be like this. Mm. We can read these books without the guidance of a guru. But the result is 100% different to that result we get by the uh, guidance of a uh, uh, self-realized soul like a guru. Yeah. Yesterday, said, yesterday he said, without Ashraya taking shelter of the spiritual master, we cannot develop this mood and behalf. Then it becomes speculation. speculation. Yeah. Yeah. Ashraya taking shelter is essential in this path. And this is the real meaning of shelter. Mm. If I accept my Gurudev, then I'm under an umbrella mm. who is uh, uh, even, uh, what heißt Kugelsicher? <laughs> bulletproof. Bulletproof. Was yeah. bulletproof. <laughs> so we only have to accept his shelter, then we are safe for everything. And mm. he is really, um, he, nobody can uh, uh, attack this constellation between a disciple who takes shelter of a guru. Mm. These two are, you cannot defeat. Paradoxically, Paradoxically, because the moment of taking shelter is the moment of mm, surrender when all the walls come down. Yeah, yeah. So mm. all your protections come down, but yeah, you, yeah. <laughs> but you're still protected by Guru from bullets. Yeah. After all, in the middle there is something what is completely helpless, mm. and uh, but in that moment. What you say, these walls and these coverings are mm -hmm. finished, then we are on the safest point in our life. <laughs> paradox. Uh, par paradox. Naked, naked, bare naked, and yes, as, naked. as safe as we'll ever be. Yes. Rade, Rade. I was just thinking if somebody is addicted to the king of drugs, heroin, heroin, 
then there's no chance to get rid of this actually. There is no chance anymore. From the world of heroin, you can maybe come down, but from heroin, never. <laughs> this is very rustic, uh, Gauravani. <laughs> you you will go and 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 you will do whatever the drug wants from you. You have no free will anymore. Thanks for <laughs> There are cups here in our <laughs> ashram. Thank you. Thank for and steal it. <laughs> You're addicted, you do this, no? So yeah, we all want some addiction. I, I mean, I was meditating about addiction and obsession. And in my life, I have always felt that I'm more happy when I have some addiction and some obsession. So that's why I turned to the heroin. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, I mean, this, this comparison has always made me uncomfortable. I like it's very funny and it's very useful to an extent. But the great difference is that the heroin addict, of course, searches for the drug outside, mm. whereas the heroin addict searches inside for more of that <coughs> of that of that Adirani in him or herself to develop, to evolve that, that love that, uh, that's in, in the soul. Yeah, this is the thing, we don't know that the, the heroin addict wants to escape the world, yeah. but the addict of, of Swamini mm -hmm. wants to yeah. share this in the world, wants yeah. to give with yeah. present in the world, mm -hmm. like our Gurudev is present in the world. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I just want to make it clear. I don't know, maybe those who are listening first time. <laughs> <laughs> I just, yeah, because I am always, you know, I try to, because heroin is the stuff that the people take who are very addicted to drugs. But heroin, heroin that's also uh, a name or a description of Shimati Radhika mm -hmm. when she is with the hero who is Krishna, just to make it. Yeah. Just to clear it. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> See, you didn't know. <laughs> so, such firm determination is possible in unadulterated devotion. Unadulterated an unadulterated devotion means the devotion which is filled with the desire to please the beloved and which is completely devoid of any desire for personal happiness. Mm. This finds its culmination in the service of Sri Radha. Because there is such firm determination in the service of Sri Radha, a swift cessation of unwanted habits and deep realizations in bhajan are guaranteed. <clears throat> because there is such firm determination in the service of Sri Radha, a swift cessation of unwanted habits and deep realizations in bhajan are guaranteed. Wow. What does this mean? I feel that is uh, the hidden blessing of the service to Sri Radhika. Because it is, you know, we have been taught now for some years from Gurudev, what is the difference between the service to God and the service to love? Hmm? Yeah. Many, many subjects we have heard, and uh, it was something new for, for us to hear and to learn, because mostly 
in our lives we have been striving for God or for God realization, self realization. But to hear about, to, you know, surrender to divine love, to love itself, herself, that has such a power. And here Baba says, it is in such a firm determination that is developed by the grace of Sri Radha, <clears throat> because she is the one who makes even the Supreme Lord surrender to herself, to her love, and, you know, forget who he is and become intoxicated by her love. So divine love, Sri Radhika, has such a power that anyone who comes in contact with that love or that feeling, I want to surrender to divine love, I want to serve divine love, I want to connect to divine love, gets so strong that a swift cessation of unwanted habits and deep realizations are guaranteed, isn't it? I was just thinking that, you know, um, how can we experience this, or have we experienced this ever? If we just imagine, if we have the chance to serve Swamini's representative, when we can serve our Gurudev, then if we look in our own lives also, uh, some habits changed, you know, without pressure. Like Gurudev never gives pressure to anyone, no? Like no. whoever comes to him, he never says, do stop this, stop that, you know, like what is unfavorable. But by s associating with him, by serving him, so mm -hmm. by serving the Dasi of Radharani, already we can feel that some things are changing, some unwanted like habits are, are just stopping, you know, like naturally. Now what Suniti said, now if we go this one step further, when we really connect to Radharani, then what is saying what is guaranteed a swift cessation of unwanted habits and deep realizations ah. in Belgium. Nee. deep realization <coughs> darum baba what you say deep realizations in Belgium are guaranteed that's like that's an enormous sentence a statement yeah sure definitely but you have to remember one single thing also that um it's not that an art and um is finished so quickly so many people think that um, all these stages we gallop through like horses one step next step next step honestly speaking an art and if you remember the story of chatabharat the anartas go very deep so it's not that we have to Gurudev is always giving this wonderful point not to be fixated, like you said. He's not pressuring anyone. He is, sometimes he is. <laughs> I, I have to honestly say, but he is doing it in love. But he is not focusing. My point I want to make is not to focus on the fight against Anartas because we will lose. But to be on the other side, how can the Anatas go out? And Ma in Madhurya Kadambini, we hear Vishwana Chakravati Thakur is saying, it's like you have milk and, and you have uh, uh, ink. The more milk you put into the ink, into the ink, the ink goes away. So it's not the ink you cannot, how can you fight the ink from the milk? You know, you have to fill yourself with topics of Radha and Krishna and then the Anatas go. But if we struggle and if we fight, with the Anatas, we will lose. We will not be able to conquer them. Arjuna is saying, Maya is stronger than the wind, only by the mercy of Gurudev can we conquer that. And it's not like, oh yeah, in three years, Anatha Nibriti may be gone. Chattaparat was attached to a deer at the end of his life, and it was he was a huge sadhu. I cannot even think of his load, you know? So we have to, this is the point that we should not, like Gurudev always say, if you have a business to do, you do it and you go on, you know. You never fixate yourself on the Arnatas, but at the same time, every day, try to put something into your heart which is not Anartha. And then those go away. Vishwana Chakravati Party is saying, it's a process. It's not that you have to be completely free from the Anartas and then 
prema will come into your heart. It's not true. It is a process that prema slowly, slowly comes into your heart. It's at the race of that son of prema come into your heart and then the, anata, and the anatas will leave. This is a very, very different point of view I was taught. So, uh, many of us have been taught the, uh, this way, that first of all, we have to be anartha nivriti and then we can engage in Raganuga Bhakti. It's completely the other way around. It's completely wrong. We have to put, first we have put in the nectar and then the crap goes out and then all anarthas go out. That is the only way Raganuga Bhakti is working. So we have to take care that we don't engage in further anarthas and at the same time, we fill ourselves up with, with top topics of Radha and Krishna. So sometimes this is easy and sometimes it's not, but this is the main focus. If we focus on the anarthas, we have no chance in conquering oh. them, no chance. Oh, so we, wow. have to, we have to focus on the nectar and on the mercy of Gurudevs. And then here at this point Baba is making, it's guaranteed if we follow, he's strictly saying, he is saying, Guru Padashraya, you know, this Rupa Goswami, the first thing he says in Bhakti Rasamrita Sindhu, Guru Padashraya Shiksha Diksha, you know, this very famous verse, instructions of Gurudev will save you from everything, but not if we fight every day with the Anathas and forget to listen to Radha and Krishna. And Chakradi Pad is saying that listening to the Rasa Lila pastimes is the most powerful medicine to drive mm -hmm. out the Anartha Nivriti straight out from our heart. And exactly therefore, Gurudev is giving us. And therefore, Gurudev is saying, you have to read Radha Rasa, Suti, Radha Rasa Sudhanidhi and Vilapa Kusumanjali because those are the only ones which will help us, the pastimes of Radha and Krishna in Vrindavan. This is the only medicine, not our intelligence and not our willpower. Sorry. <laughs> Tarun, beautiful. I I just I just I just wanted to add. Um, Kesha Baba, one time, the God brother of of Guru Dev. Uh, you know, we always talk about the gunas to transcend the gunas to transcend the ego to get rid of the anarthas. Then Baba said, "It's a foolish concept." Like yes. Tarun, you just said. He said, yes. "No, you have to drown yourself in prema." You have to drown the gunas in prema. When they're once they're soaked with prema, they're still there, but they're soaked with prema. So this is the thing, and that gets, goes only through drinking with the ears, reading, listening, associating, reading about the pastimes. You're absolutely right. This is the only way in in our context. Otherwise, we just run against the wall if we want to just get rid of our gunas. You can. And our, you can. Right. You can. You can be your own thermometer. I am my own thermometer. The less, the less I, I engage in, in divine, you know, in, 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 the less I drink from that <clears throat> fountain of nectar, the more I struggle. And the, the more I drink from that fountain, the less I struggle. That is very easy. Everyone can be his own. If you are honest, everyone can see that. The more you invest, the more you harvest. The more you don't invest, the less you harvest. That is very simple. So that is the, the, the realization. And I can say when, 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 when life is tough, you know, and you don't do much bhajan, you struggle. And when you go more into the bhajan, then more nectar will flow. But us alone fighting against the urges of the body and the, and the, and the, the impetus from the three gunas and all these things, we can, the seminars and how to control the mind and how to, how to, how to, how to, very easy. Suniti just read it. Very simple. Just follow what Gurudev is saying. Get up, chant your Diksha Mandras, chant your Chapa Mandras, be nice in your job, be loving. Gurudev, therefore, that, that is why Gurudev is saying love and action. That is all. Not only to the devotees, but to everyone. This is what I have to learn. And this is always my, when I go to school, when I go to my job, when I go to Govinda Priya's parents, when I, my parents are no more there. But when I deal with this world, it should be done with a loving behavior. And this is, this is, in this world, it's challenging enough. And then this is one side. And the other side is in the early morning time, you feel yourself, you go deeply into your Diksha Mantras because the Diksha Mantras is the most important instruction of Gurudev. Without Diksha Mantras, failure in Diksha Mantras, that is the most harmful thing. Go deep into the Diksha Mantras because those are the pipelines 
So every mantra represents the person. And if we connect to this person every day without any fail, you know, I, I, can, I can tell you, if you allow me, a very personal story with my Gurudev. Mm. So at one point <clears throat> years ago, I started in 2004. I got the Diksha and Siddha Pranali from Baba. And for three years, I was on full speed, you know, getting up every morning, 3.30, doing three hours bhajan, go to school, come home, do bhajan, go to school, very early get up, again, like three hours. And at one point, I broke down. It was too much. It was much too much. I could not cope with you because sometimes you, you have in the evening, you have parents' evening, you have, you have uh, duties to perform. So I couldn't do this anymore. I was finished. So then I was thinking, okay, what I have to do? And I wrote Bob and still have this letter. I still have his answer. I wrote to Baba, Baba, I'm finished. I cannot follow this whole practice every day. It is too much. It's not my adhikar. It's not my level right now. So Baba very mercifully, he wrote me back and he sent me a minimum because the Acharyas and the Mahachans, they are so merciful and they give you so much hope. And if the, the point I want to make is even the minimum is enough to be safe. That's what I want to say you to, to not to, to, to despair or to give up hope, just to, that you can do what you can do. And he said, never fail the Diksha Mantras, never. And he said, not all man if you if you don't have the time to chant them all on the mala, some of us have malas for the Diksha Mantras. If, if everything is like Uttar is saying, if the walls are coming down, even if you chant them on your fingers, but never, never ever fail to chant the Diksha Mantras. So this was so, so hopeful for me and so powerful for me because he didn't say, oh man, you rascal, you know, stand up, get up early and do the things. He was not like Urdev. He, he, he's too much full of love. So he gave, he gave something, a rope of hope, you know, like you can, you can catch that one. And even from that point of view, you can start again and getting stronger and stronger. There should be no despair, you know, even the slightest effort, Arjuna, Krishna said to Arjuna, will be rewarded. So this is very important that we know we should we, sh we can do as much as we can, but never do a fail day. Never fail with the thing, and you are always protected. And my humble <sighs> advice is really focus on the mantras you got from your Gurudev. This is the most powerful, most most powerful uh, 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 anga of our bhakti. It's just my humble opinion. <laughs> Jai Sri Radhi. Because there is such firm determination in the service of Sri Radha, the swift cessation of unwanted habits and deep realizations in bhajan <coughs> are guaranteed. The aspirant experiences it as if Sri Radha, Sri Radha Rani, takes him and her along by the hand. Mm -hmm. The transcendental visions of Sripad Prabodhananda, who is completely fixed in the lotus feet of Sri Radha is even more vivid than a direct meeting with the beloved. Yes. The transcendental visions of Sripad Prabodhananda, who is completely fixed in the lotus feet of Sri Radha, is even more vivid than a direct meeting with the beloved. Is it not direct vision? Yeah, the transcendental visions is even more vivid than a direct meeting. Mm -hmm. So I feel it's no difference. 
it's very much alive, his visions and his exchange with uh, Shimate Radhika is so much alive that there's no difference. Oh, it's even bigger. More it's more vivid than a direct meeting. That's why in the next sentence, Baba says, bereft of any experience, his heart is unsteady and aches of separation. It's also more vivid because it's full of yearning. When you directly meet the person, the yearning is no more there. Then you are in Milan, then you are meeting. But when you are not directly there, there is so much yearning and that makes it also more vivid. <clears throat> like you're, you're almost there, you're very close, but still there is, uh, you know, yes. there's, still, there's still something to go and that intensity. Yeah. But that also means Tarun and also me, like other, that means actually the mind can be so powerful in, in, in the meditation that it can give us some even more vivid experience than directly. The mind can be your best friend and the mind can be your worst enemy. Everything is in the mind, of course. <laughs> But here we have to also see that these sentences also tend to come from Sadakavesh, you know, from when the yearning is still there. Swarupavesh, then you are in direct meeting. So this, this yearning, this, this, uh, this greed, this lopa, makes these experiences much more vivid in, in, in that sense. And again, this is also some, some secret hint to us that we should aspire for such spurtis for such visions that we can experience in themselves. So this is also like the honey, honey put around our lips that we go also into that matter because he has, Prabhupada Saraswati, he has many direct visions. Don't believe that he has no direct visions. He wants to make us eager. He wants to make us greedy for those, uh, for those uh, vivid experiences. So this is also the Mahachan's way of teaching us and kicking us a little bit in the butt to make that one to make that step and go deeper into it. Mm. I'm, I'm still pondering on this one sentence that she takes us directly by the hand. Yeah, and, that was the and sentence I another question and What just, it belongs to yours. What, is, what would a direct vision be? A direct meeting, not a direct vision, a direct meeting. I mean, uh, he's in Sadakavesh, moving to Siddhavesh, but then he's a living poet. A direct meeting can yeah. only happen when you gave up this body. A direct exactly. meeting, a direct meeting can only happen when you have left the body behind and when and you are straight in exactly. the Nikuncha Lila, in the eternal Lila. Uh, everything else is not 100% at, at, uh, in the sense of the word a direct meeting. Exactly. Of course, it's a direct meeting because a self realized soul like Gurudev and Baba always meet with the, with Radhika, but it's still a difference. Uh, when they sit here and have to talk to us and when they are there without this shell with this body so of course there is this difference is there so that is also a point to consider yeah thanks for being i i have uh, yeah, yeah. yeah. was it that she takes us by the hand yes she wait when he is in his um meditations The as aspirant experiences it as if she, Radharani, takes him or her <coughs> along by the hand. I mean, she's coming and she is guiding also. It's one very thing, one, close. Yeah. close. One thing uh, we all to, uh, Yes, yes, Tone? One thing we have to always remember is that you know, it works very perfectly the other way around. For us, it, it's not so easy to get a glimpse of the spiritual world. But for them, to help us, very easy. Mm. It not depends on them. <clears throat> it not depends on them. What we realize it depends on us 
they are there, they are open, they are try to prepare us and uh, they send their messenger everything they do. And uh, but it depends on us how many walls we uh, still <laughs> protect around us. Or we think it protect us, these walls or these coverings. But if we are open and let them coverings falling down, then they are there. They are always there, right? Yeah, that's also a very nice point. To be in the readiness for being guided in the consciousness that I'm never alone. Even there is my Gurudev, my Guru Manjari, and then also Srimati Radhika. But one thing that came to my mind, I want to go back and ask the question. You know, from the f uh, one of the first sentences in the commentary, it says, After crossing the stage of anatta nivritti, cessation of bad habits, the stage of asakti, appears transcendental attachment and the Lord's pleasure potency starts her work of providing the transcendental relish. So my question is, is she not always providing us with her guidance and some taste even from the very beginning? <coughs> I... Uh... One example comes in my mind. If there is a person who, who smokes cigarette or whatever, this um, or even drinks alcohol, this uh, damaged something in the mouth. So your fine senses not working. That means in this bad habits, they block us to get the real taste from the sweet things we will eat. So that means even if we eat the sweetest things, but there are this, uh, for example, the smoke or this alcohol, what is, uh, mm, what's that? Zerstören. Destroy. Destroy our fine senses in the mouth. So we cannot taste it. And so this is, for me, also like these bad habits. Mm -hmm. As long as they are there, we cannot taste mm -hmm. this, the other things, the sweet things. It all tastes like smoke or like alcohol. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so first we have to stop this smoking. And then suddenly we realized, oh my God, how sweet is this? It wasn't like before, but it was, right? But we could not taste it. And that makes the difference to give up these bad habits so that we come in a higher taste. You remember, Hanumanji, the higher taste? Book? Yeah. yeah sure. <laughs> It's long I ago. Distributed many on the street. <laughs> now this is a really nice way to put it. I think it's mm, it's really a pragmatic matter. Now I'm I'm enjoying your answer and thinking about Suniti's question. I mean, the difference between anarat for us and something like mortal sin in Christianity or Islam or Judaism is that anarat is really. I mean, I don't actually know that, uh, Tarun, you can help with the translation. It's unfavorable things, unfavorable habits, right? It's not absolute forbidden activity. Yeah, yes, 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 yes. For it's very the point, dramatic. also, what the question you know, Suniti is now playing. Now, Suniti knows the answer, but she is only helping us that we come to that answer. I have the feeling she knows the answer to her beautiful question. Um, 
the point is, Suniti, what, what comes to my mind, that Baba is here not referring, you are completely right. If I, of course, she is with us the whole way, and she is helping us, and she is giving us the hand. But the, the two, the, the two uh, most, important, most important words are transcendental relish. So that means after passing through these stages, the Baba is focusing here on the relish. The relish will start in us. Now, uh, I can say for me, it's not transcendental relish. There is some relish, of course, according to the Adhika, but what you just read means that when we pass into this, you know, Ashakti is such, Jainanda can also say something to Ashakti is such a very high stage, you know, oh. after Ruchi, you know. So, so that at that moment, when Ashakti comes, one definition is you cannot stop doing bhajan. You cannot stop doing anything. That is like when the honey glass is so much tilted, you cannot put the honey back in. It's not possible to put the honey back in. So it flows and flows and flows. So this is Ashakti. So at that moment, the relish, the transcendental relish appears more and more into our heart. But it appears... It, it appears in Bhakta Cho also. Bhakta Cho is eating prasadam and Bhakta Cho is happy. So this, this relish is always there from, from day one. She takes us by the hand. But transcendental relish is something entirely different. And this is what here Baba is meaning. Jayananda, maybe you can, you can also help us. Can I a little bit add? Everybody is so sweet. This is uh, Bhakti. At that time, our Swarupa Besh slowly shifting. And yes. then, then that stage completely fixed. Yeah. So then taste is like say Asakti is, our Swarupa Besh is very, very fixing. But before before another nibility or another, you know, before another nibility, it's very, very kind of what I say. It's not shaky, fixed. shaky, yeah. Therefore, sometimes we can taste, but another time, again, material conception of life. Kind of this making very big, but asakti is very, very, you know, fixing. And then asakti, it become very tasteful. Then enter the rough stage. Then completely fixing. This is Guru Dev say one pointness. This one point is bring us so much taste. Therefore, we cannot, you know, difficult to deviate. So that's, I, I feel it. Thank you. Thank so you. Nice. Yeah, before, on a level of development, of fixation, I have a tendency to always, yeah, come down again, right? I have a tendency to, to lose the taste or to be shaky in my uh sadhana and the modes of ignorance are still very much influencing but then at asakti do you think the mode the modes are completely disappeared at asakti may i ask this jainanda maharaj no karuna also says no hmm? not fully i i was asking if at the, if the level of asakti other modes, the gunas the, um, of material nature are overcome? Not completely overcome, but say, almost. Um, most of them overcome. But sometimes, mm. a little bit, like sometimes Guru Dev say, you know, sometimes from, sometimes Shuddha Sattva, some, something happening becomes Sattva. Sometimes mm. Sattva becomes, sometimes become a little bit rajas. You know, kind of, because this is not completely fixed, it means Guna is still working. That's my understanding. You know, you know, it, it is very, very helpful. Um, of course, Gurudev tells us we should only read Vilapakusumanjali and rather as a Sudanidi. But if you read as a sadhaka, if you read the chapter in Madhurya Kadambini about Anartha Nivriti, you will find yourself. You will find yourself like exactly now what you said, Suniti. I think there are six stages of, um, you know, uh, getting up early one day, next day, don't get up early. And Vishwana Chakravati Thakur is making very, very practical examples how we live through this shaky stage. 
So when we read this part, this, this, this chapter of Maduya Karambini, it serves many purposes. It gives us great hope and it shows us that the Acharyas, this is catered to us very much on our plate that we see what it means, the Anartanibhiti, what it means. We, we, we make mouths. Today I fast and I break it. Tomorrow I will get up at three o'clock and we break it. Today I will chant. 64 rounds, and I will chant 40 rounds. So now these stages are all beautifully described in that chapter of Anatani Vritti. So it's like you can you can see where you are. It's like a land, you know, like a map, you know. And then, of course, when we pass through it, when we go more and more into Bhajan, this is getting less and less and less and less. It's beautifully described. I highly recommend to read that chapter because this is what our daily life is all about, that we get out of that shaky business the safe position starts in that moment we realize us as a soul and then the next step as a form a spiritual form then we are fixed because then the higher taste is there then these other things lose their taste we don't this is matter in that moment we realize the soul then the pleasure is entering in our hearts and we can recognize every other soul we can we get this taste and then this is also Prabhupada this is Gurudev all day uh, to this point, we have to come there to realize our real self. As long as we are identified in this material body with the material senses, we are attached to them. And we like, again, the mind is remembering the pleasure in these senses. And in that moment, the, the, the mind becomes a bridge to our eternal senses eternal body that we are that we realize deeply really realized i mean realized that we are a soul then this thing is finished 100 percent you see we can see this raguna das he was still in his body but he sit on the border of the radakund he didn't even recognize the burning sun on his head. So tigers around him, he didn't recognize this because he was on another level. There is not a meaning of uh, we doing this or we fixing this. And that moment we get uh, our self-realization. Then it's finished. So, and I remember Sudevi is here and... Uh, Saduma many times told about this story from Prabhupada when uh, they went to, to his place to, when he was in London. And uh, Saduma, she was a disciple of Prabhupada very early. And there was a, a, a young uh, girl when they was there and they was the, the world master of the book distribution in Germany then at that time. And they was very proud of this, and so they went to London, and uh, was uh, um, there was a meeting with Prabhupada personally, and um, then they come enter this room where Prabhupada sit, and uh, they were thinking, oh, Prabhupada will touch our shoulder. Wow, well, well, very good, but that was not like this, right? He looked at these guys, and then he asked. What do you learn from my books? What do you learn from the Bhagavad Gita? What is the... And then many answers come, but he was not satisfied. No? Right, Sudevi? It's like this, no? Yeah, yeah. And uh, after all, he was not very happy with all these answers. And then he very loudly say, you have to understand you are not this body. Amazing, huh? Isn't it? So and now we all 
can ask ourselves how close we are to that point that we understand and realize that we are not the body. And then we come to the point that all this, what you say, anatta, anattas, and so on. Unwanted, yeah. unwanted habits. This unwanted habits automatically will finish. We have no more interest in this because we are not identified with this body. So this is the main point, to finish this identification of the false ego and uh, with this body. This disconnection we have to cut. Then uh, all the other things will come. Jainanda, what do you say? Hmm? What do you mean about this point? To self-realize, to realize our soul and then all these anatas will automatically... Sure, sure. If we, we become Swarupa City, everything <laughs> fixing like Guru Dev, you know? Automatically. Automatically. So automatically. No, no. No, no pressure on ourselves and our bad habits. They are there in the material body and in the, in the uh, false ego. But if we come to that point that we are realize ourselves, then it's finished. Yes. I'm allowed to uh, to make a really nice experience because for myself relaxation is the most important for me it is not a question being disciplined that i can do easily i'm a doer that's no problem true, true. but now i make the experience to relax this is strange <laughs> for me this is really strange <laughs> to Avoid all services. Also nicht, ne? <laughs> Sitting in the sun. <laughs> Sleeping. Wow. And it's feeling like being in ecstasy. Wow. It's pew. And now, because I don't have anything to do, I don't have any plans, and my mind gets calm. Because of that, it gets calm. Wow. And then I'm May, I'm, I'm feeling that I'm open to receive. Wow. Finally, wow. this was this was my great wish to be open to receive. And I think you said it so nicely yesterday, Gopinath. I can say, yes, I'm living in Gurudev's sweetness. And, and no, I'm living in Gurudev's grace and experience his sweetness mm -hmm. through sure. all circumstances which are here, through all sorts of no. faces, through wow. all bhajans, wow. so smoothly. And I'm allowed to do this, and I allow it to myself, this most <laughs> difficulty. Mm -hmm. And I'm gentle to myself. Wow. So this is um, it's a really... We should do this, perhaps, perhaps it's German people. It could be that there is, uh, <laughs> yes, <laughs> special. Yes, thank you. So, Niti, so David, you deserve it so much. I'm so Hello, happy to hear this. You deserve this so much. I'm so, so happy. So happy. So beautiful. Hello, I, also I just want, want to add... To okay. Sudevi, I need just the opposite. I need the seva to reach this ecstasy. I know. <laughs> and if I don't have the ecstasy, if I don't have the seva, then my mind is spinning. And it cannot be calm. I love this experience. I love this experience. So thank you for putting it like this because it also makes it very understandable for me. We are all different. We must all use our own strength and our own weaknesses to grow. Grow and help each other as well. Jai Sri Ram, Jai Sri Radhe. Jai Sri Radhe. And may I say, one second. And 
perhaps I'm, I'm finding a new way in Seba, <laughs> not because of discipline, being disciplinic and, and uh, loyal and eager, <laughs> this, yeah, but um, because only uh, voluntarily, mm. or only and, and to respond more than to do. Mm. Yes. Mm. Well, this is this is actually Manjari Bhav. Manjari Bhav is not meaning uh, work by pressure or but by inspiration. Mm. And I think this is a part of this what you speak about. An inner inspiration in a relaxed mood. This is a very beautiful thing. No? We don't have any pressure in the Manjari mood. Jai. Goravani, you wanted to say? No, but Gora Chandra wanted to say something actually. Oh my God, sorry. No, I don't want to say anything. I only wanted to say hello and only say that I really enjoyed this lecture to listen to everyone. It's so nice. You can feel that everyone is so excited, everybody wants to share. So I only wanted to say hello and yeah. say that I really enjoy this lecture. Wow. Arigata gozaimasu. Suniti, suniti. Suniti. Rade. One day, I think February, Guru Dave told us to, to enter Laga Bhakti. We need three things. Don't uh, say, don't argue, mm. don't uh, say, don't uh, fight. Mm. Second one is peaceful. Mm. So they be say peaceful. We need peaceful to go in, enter. And then three things Guru Dev say to love. So Sudevi gave us so much, you know, inspiration. Without peacefulness, actually, we cannot enter. I also feeling like, you know, similar thing. Of course, Sudevi is more great. And the Guru Dev also saying, why we came to Brindavan? And at first, what should we do? Be deluxe. Mm -hmm. <laughs> You know, eating, sleeping, and chanting, that is a good thing saying. So we slowly, slowly running to be relaxed. I also still, I want to run from Sudevi to be relaxed and to go more deeper. <laughs> rather, rather. Actually, this is, no, this is our problem that we think we are the doers and we have to do something. But the moment we realize it's happening to us mm. by mercy, then we are totally relaxed. So I was many years struggling with Gurudev's philosophy when devotees arrived and he said, just sleep. I said, no, Gurudev, they only have two weeks time. They should chant. They should do something. I said, Are, everything will happen by Kripa. Why you're bothering? Everything will happen by mercy. But... Relax first. Learn to relax. This we don't know how to relax because we think we have to do. But actually, if we take shelter, then by mercy it will happen to us. Rade, Rade. Um, when Gurudev said this first time, I also was wondering because from my background in the past, I always heard you have to be in seva always as much as possible that the mind is not disturbing. But actually, how can the heart enter then? There has to be a break and come down and come into this feeling of love that actually I want to do something. If we don't feel that, how we can serve out of love, out of prema? If we don't feel it, you have to first feel it. And therefore you need the peace. And I'm also very happy for Sudevi that actually she can make this wonderful experience. And there's another point. We also want to find our 
real nature, which is in our Sita Deha, in our spiritual body. So without peace, how we can actually realize that if the mind is just giving us again and again the swip, go on, go on. So we have to come to the point that we can feel our real nature because Radharani wants us to serve out of love. How we can, if we cannot feel our real nature? And due to Gurudev's mercy, I can say that I see my Seva completely in a different way today than before. I'm not doing the same thing actually like in the past. It changes completely. And I'm so happy today when I'm standing in the kitchen cooking something or making some bread for Braj Sundari when she's going to work, you know. It's such a fun to make this actually. Before, if I would think in the past to doing such, such a yeah, how you huh? menial service, mutual <laughs> services. <laughs> no, the mind would tell me you have to see the the big, the whole big, and you have to do something special, you know. But actually, no, it's the the mutual service. It's the the, the small things made out of love, who is actually much more important. If you just offer one flower a day with love, it makes such a difference than in comparison to jump 24 hours in and doing so much seva out of your mind. Goravani, I, I, it just came something to me. It's also written further in this uh, verse, in the commentary. It talks about bhajan kriya. What is bhajan kriya really? You know, what is love in action, which Gurudev described? And it says, is bhajan kriya is to do everything in the mood and instructions of my Gurudev. So if I'm making bread for my wife in the mood and feelings of my Gurudev, then in this thing, all the sweetness and relish can come. And if my Gurudev tells me to put on socks on him, or he tells me to make bread for my wife, it's the same. It's the same intensities there. I think maybe putting socks on him is the direct saver so I get the most mercy, but it's not. It's not. It's the same if I'm somewhere, and like Tarun says, I go to school, I give love to my uh, school children, this in the mood of my Gurudev, it's it's it is like I'm using Tarun as my example. He's my idol, but Bhajan Kriya means to do everything in the mood and with the instructions of a Gurudev. Whatever we're doing in our day-to-day -day life, it can become Bhajan Kriya. It's not only being here in Vrindavan; it's wherever we are if we follow in the mood of our Gurudev. It, 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 this is this is very wonderful. Thank you. But honestly speaking, we we look up to you, man. First of all, it's not you know. I want to say first of all, you have to define seva. Many people think seva means only practical stuff. This is not what it means. Seva means first of all what we just said half an hour ago, the, the most important seva is in the heart. The most important seva is japa, diksha, smaranam. You know, this, this is a spiritual seva is the most important thing. If you don't have this foundation, you can run around the whole day and do practical seva. This is fantastic. But at one point, you will burn out. You will not have the strength mm -hmm. to carry on like that. And honestly speaking, without making anything, we have witnessed this many, many times that people running around 18 hours a day with no bhajan in the morning and burning out. I experienced this myself many times, not in Vrindavan, but uh, Goravani knows we had quite some seva doing in Heidelberg, you know. So the first, the first most important thing is to understand seva means everything. Seva means cooking, seva means doing menial service but more important it means seva for your heart 
for the bhajan to follow the instructions of Gurudev, Diksha Mandras, Chapa. And another thing is, you know, for those who work full time, um, it, is, it is not so easy. Like you say now, Gopinath, of course, we always trust in Radhika. And of course, we know that we are guided. But to, to, I can speak from my part as a school teacher. Nowadays, I cannot say, okay, I retire now. I go to Rindavan now. First of all, this is not my Adhikar. Second of all, this will never happen because I'm a governmental teacher. I cannot say just goodbye. And then it is very important that you have a balance of your uh, karmic duties and your spiritual duties. In Vrindavan, for me, when I go now, by your blessings to Vrindavan in April, for me, this is like charging batteries. You know, like mm -hmm. sitting down, trying to chant a leg if I can do it, or, or be in the association with you all and talk to you and eat prasadam and relax. What Sudevi Su was just saying, the German mentality is we work, you know, then we come home and then we have no time really to relax. So this is what this is why Gurudev is saying for those who work full time, please relax and bring down and then you make automatically you become peaceful. But it doesn't mean we, we sleep there. When, whenever we go to Vrindavan, it should be a charging of the batteries. That is what, how I see it, to put, to put the Akku in the wall of Vrindavan and to surcharge my batteries. This is, I cannot go to Vrindavan after seven weeks of school and run around the whole day in Vrindavan and do every kind, everything, everything, everything. Then I break down in the evening. This is not possible for, for people who are working the whole day. So, Therefore, I am so happy and thankful that Gurudev is doing like that, that he is saying, now relax and enjoy. I mean, enjoying in the sense of go deep into your bhajan. Of course, I don't enjoy. I sit not and, and eat ice cream the whole day. I get sick like a dog. But you know what I mean? This relaxation, the peacefulness, and the spiritual atmosphere. But those who live in Vrindavan the whole time, it's a different thing. The holy dham is much, much more powerful, much more powerful than so th for those who work in the, in the Western world. So for us, it's an oasis. So we look up to you. So Tarun, I, I want to give an example. You're right. Here is the power supply is always there in Vrindavan. You know, it's all uninterrupted power going on. You know, like Gurudev is giving uninterrupted power for Seva, for Bhajan. So two weeks ago, I had to go to Europe. And I was very anxious to travel to Europe because I felt, oh my God, I might lose everything there. It was my misconception because Guru, they said, I said, what should I do? I have these meetings. I have this work. He said, just give love and good feelings to everyone. This is your seva to do there. And I got relaxed. <laughs> In that moment, I got relaxed. So this relaxation can happen here, but it can also happen there if we follow in the mood of instruction of Gurudev. So I went there, Tarun, for three days and I just did what Gurudev would do, you know, have a coffee with them, be there for the gute Stimmung, you know. And I yes. often see what did Gurudev do all these 20 years when he was traveling across the globe. He was there for the good vibes, no? Mm. He gave us that good vibes that we were relaxed in Europe, no? Like we ate with him, we danced with him, we, we slept with him, we shared, we cried with him, we did everything. And then I felt like, yeah, that's what I wanted to say. Like, it doesn't matter where we are, where he sends us, if we follow in his mood, we can always be relaxed and always be in, this, in the service of our Gurudev. And so I just wanted to share this small anecdote of, of my life because I also had forgotten how to relax in Europe. I felt I, <laughs> but I understood he's doing, you know, I don't have to worry much. Sorry. Very nice. Yes, wonderful. Uh, I cannot hear Tarun, you were speaking? No. Mute. I was speaking to Govinda Priya, not, oh, not, okay. no. <laughs> very wonderful, Govinda, very wonderful. It's, I just wanted to say, it's like, of course, whenever we are, we are always protected by Guru and Guru's Kripa. I just wanted to, you know, that it's a different, 
a very different atmosphere when you enter Brindavan and when you enter Karlsruhe, you know, or Stuttgart or Munich, you know. So therefore, it's so important that we always, you know, connect to Brindavan and go to Brindavan if it's possible. So the last three years was like it uh, it was not possible you see that so that therefore yeah. the at uh, the charging of the aku is is the most important thing to do in vrindavan bhajan it's, it's the power power station here vrindavan like it's always charged <clears throat> no like we come here and immediately we feel the power because it never <laughs> stops I was just meditating a lot about how Gurudev survived Europe, no? Like all these years, he was always fencing himself. As you said, Tarn, we have to fence ourselves. We have to fence ourselves with bhajan, with our diksha mantras, we fence ourselves with seva, with association of like-minded devotees. That's what Gurudev did. He fenced himself a lot, you know, with like, you know, he was always fenced so that his mind couldn't go out anywhere. He was always engaged, like traveling every day, every day a different place, every day a different program. Like who traveled with him knows after one week we were kaput, no? Couldn't do it anymore. <laughs> But this is the thing, Tarno, we have to fence ourselves. Then we are protected. We need those ingredients, as you said, to fence ourselves for our, you know, spiritual life. Yes, Gopinath, exactly. And um, what I can feel, this power in, in <coughs> Gurudev, now we traveled last year three weeks, we was finished after this. And uh, Gurudev, he, he traveled months <laughs> or years. years. <laughs> I I could not rec I don't know how, how he did it. But now I understand that really Gurudev is Uh, he stay in a different level. He is this, what I just spoke about, he realized himself as the soul. And in that moment, all the, this heavy, heaviness from the body disappear. That what, uh, what, what we are, uh, uh, carry with our bodies in this um, and also this this uh, this energy I mean at the moment it's not a good example here in Vrindavan to speak about uh, uh, to uh, charge the batteries because <laughs> since since two days there is no no uh, we have no electricity Only here the maybe we can change the, the point of uh, example <laughs> super super charge <laughs> there is, no, water. No, water. Uh, no water is here and no no possibility to change any battery but we will change this uh, point uh, we know everybody know what is the meaning of this but i feel that the power of gurudev is uh, really he is on another level than we And so he is able, even in his age, to uh, to stay here for uh, with, with with hundreds of devotees every day. They enter his room. You can sit there for one hour. You will see so many new faces going in and out. So many new situations, and in between. Ten people come to ask him what you like to eat, Gurudev, and this uh, or what we do tomorrow. And this is the energy we cannot uh, uh, create in ourselves, in our bodily consciousness. So I think every everyone agree with me when we <laughs> when I say that he is on a, on another level there, it's, right? It's constantly high. Constantly high. High on prema. Constantly. Yes. Yes, that, that is a real uh, important point. And then we can see what is possible when we enter this bodily consciousness into a spiritual consciousness. Then the energy is much higher. The body becomes no meaning. This, this kilos, what we are trying to carry, carry from A to Z. And this is then uh, gets another quality. And so there is. Uh, we have to reach on this point.
Very nice. Thank you all. We are now going to RT and thank you all for your beautiful, sweet association. You're very merciful to us. We feel inspired and hope to see you soon.